to God be the glory and praise. I would like to share to you the dream uh, that I had just this September 26 and it has something to do with Jesus. This night, uh, this particular night uh, before we went to bed, my husband actually prayed for me and said, May the Lord give you a real vision tonight. And I said, Amen and praise God. He did. So in my dream, it's very short. In my dream, at first, I didn't see anything. It's like my eyes were closed and I heard a voice saying, don't sell the house or don't leave the house. And after I heard that voice, my eyes were open and I saw myself in a living room, living room of the house. And so uh, we were there and, uh, and I suddenly looked down on the floor of this house I saw Jesus lying down on the floor and it's not like a, a person lying down like that you know on top of the the tile floor but the floor is like a clear glass and he was actually inside that clear glass his body was inside that you can see him so clear so anyway, I ran and I was screaming and I was telling everybody, Jesus is here. And I went on my knees, coming close to him. It's like he's so real there. And so anyway, that's how my dream ended. So when I woke up uh, early morning, I just realized, I said, you know, what does it mean? It's strange because I said, Lord Jesus, I usually saw you. Uh, in heaven or in the sky or in the you know on the clouds or standing in front of me and I said why is it this time you're lying down and you're like on the ground or on the stone so anyway I was praying that he will explain it to me and then uh, I truly believe that he put things together in my heart and in my mind to put this together and for all of us to be reminded about his presence and his love so anyway, I end up, uh, I said, uh, why is this that I'm not supposed to leave the house, you know? I went, open your Bible on Genesis 28, verse 16 to 17. Then Jacob awake from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. On Matthew 7 verse 24 to 27. Build your house on the rock. It's about building your house on the rock. So Matthew 7 verse 24 to 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and slammed against this house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. I just remember that Jesus should be our foundation. So the house represents the house that you live in, literally. And it also actually represents the family. The father, the mother, and the children. When the father being the head of the household and the mother who believe in God and they will fully bind together, and look at God and Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Being the head of the household and telling their children and being, being the model of these children. This house will never be shaken. If the family that prays together stays together under, under the love and the grace of God will never be shaken because their foundation is Jesus Christ himself. He's the rock. He's showing that whatever trials that comes, to, uh, comes your way, whatever problem and everything, you don't need to worry. Lift everything in the Lord. 
because you will never be shaken. The foundation is God himself, Jesus Christ. He is the rock. And when you go to 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 to 14, According to the grace of God, which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. For no man lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So our foundation should really be Jesus Christ. We have to pray constantly that the Lord will give us the wisdom and understanding and discernment that we will stay strong and that we will live righteously in the name of Christ. Remember, remember the Bible verse about the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He will lead me to walk in righteousness. Even walking in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because Jesus is with me. Something like that. So when Jesus is our foundation, we will fear no evil because Jesus is with us. He said, fear not for I am with you. So whatever trials that comes our way, whatever things that are happening right now, I know people are so worried about the tsunami, the, the volcanic eruption, the persecution that's coming with the Christians. I'm sure the Lord will give us the strength that we need. He's not going to give us problem or trials that He knows we can't stand. He will actually be there with us. He will carry us. He is there. He's the foundation. And we are just there on top. Whatever wind that will blow there, whatever trials or temptations that will come, come your way with that house, it will never be shaken. And Jesus promised that to us. So brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, always remember, your house should always be the temple of, of God. Don't let any devil come in your house. Pray constantly as a family. Love one another, which is the best and the greatest commandment of God. Love one another. Even if the persecution right now is coming, even people are mocking you because we are Christians and they're hating us, don't hate back because we need to love them and let the Lord judge them. We don't have the right to judge anyone. Give everything to God. And uh, we always have to remember that we have to walk in righteousness and pray constantly. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen.